Hi guys, how's everybody doing? Hope you're hope you're all well and ready for spring and all that. I know I am. Okay, so I am still working on the Reader's Digest journals, and <clears throat> um, I did a just kind of a craft with me sort of sort of thing. Um, assembling the spines. Uh, so these are like a curved spine um, book. And so I really wanted to uh, do a uh, uh, hollow spine on these. So the stitching is not on the spine itself. And so I just, I've been doing them and I thought, oh my gosh, I said I would kind of um, talk my way through how I do that so you know there's tons and tons and tons of videos out there of you know how to do a hollow back spine or a hidden spine and um, that kind of thing so you know there's lots of different ways of doing of accomplishing the same goal so this is basically just my way of doing it and it's to me it just seems like the easiest the easiest way um, <clears throat> One thing about doing this type of spine, uh, one of the reasons that I kind of, I don't know, I feel like sometimes I'm kind of lazy about um, putting, you know, stitching a book together. It's just because it takes a few extra steps. You have to be a little bit more kind of tedious, you know, um, a little more exacting on, um, on, you know, your method. So, Anyway, I'm just going to basically show you guys what I do and, you know, how it works for me. So, so the first thing, um, you know, I, I sort of get my journal to the point where everything that, everything that I want to stitch on the sewing machine is done. Um, I've gone through the book a few times added what I wanted to add as far as pages. I've kind of placed everything how I want them to to be. Um, you know, I added some envelopes that I want to stitch into the center, things like that. <clears throat> and I've basically got all my pages kind of at the level in the book where I want them. I don't have too many like um, smaller pieces in these, like like narrower pages. Um, there's a few, not a ton though. So that's one thing that you definitely want to do is kind of get everything placed exactly how you want it in your signatures. It generally works best to do an odd number of signatures. So, um, these are kind of thick signatures, which, you know, is fine. I mean, I could split this out into seven or even nine, you know, you can do as many as you want. Um, it does make a difference in the spacing in between the signatures. You will see a wider gap between the signatures the, the fewer you do. You know, I mean, I've seen people do this size spine with three signatures. You know, you just wind up with a big gap in between the signatures, which gives you, you know, space to kind of fill everything up. So anyways, <clears throat> just, just saying, um, I, I put my tabs on, um, you know, all that stuff. So it's basically, it's almost finished, right? Like I've got everything kind of where I want it. Um, I haven't put any of the tags or anything in it yet, but, um, so that's where it's at. Oh, and I got my fountain pen working by the way, <laughs> just so you know, um, <laughs> cause I was super upset about it one day. And, um, anyways, I soaked it all in water and got it all working. So I have purple ink all over me. Just, just say it. Um, <clears throat> anyway, so um, yeah, so there's that. <clears throat> so first thing is to basically make a template so that, um, well, it's, yeah, I guess it's a template, but I do this a little differently than what I've seen other people do. I, I poke the holes in my signatures as I go along, um, rather than doing them all at once. So anyways you'll see so what what we want to do is we want to sort of create um a piece that we're going to be stitching the signatures onto so instead of stitching them onto the spine itself we're going to be making 
like a fake spine that we're going to stitch everything onto and then we're going to attach that to the to the cover okay so at this point we really don't need this much except that you just want to remember that um what the actual width of your spine was okay because like it was two and a half inches before i curved it okay so right now it's going to measure a little bit less than that because of the curvature right so <clears throat> you just want to make sure that um you're accounting for the actual width of the spine including the you know with the curve so um so you know what I'm saying, like it, it gets a little bit narrower because you've curved it, you know. So what I do is I get a piece of, now some people use like Tyvek or something like that and strengthen their uh, cover with that. I've used just some um, like kind of heavy duty uh, like handmade paper and that's basically what I've used to construct this, this spine um or this cover so i just kind of want to stick with paper that's just that's just that's just my preference okay nothing against tyvek <laughs> you know i just prefer to use paper or fabric that's just me um <clears throat> so so basically we'll put this aside for a minute um so basically what we want to do is we want to make something like this so got a piece of paper it's a heavy it's a piece of real heavy uh, craft cardstock this is the stuff you get from Hobby Lobby so it's pretty heavy I can't I think it's like 110 pound or something um, and then I just glued a piece of uh, fabric onto it any kind of fabric it doesn't matter um, this happens to be some flower sack fabric so and I made it a little bit longer than the height of the book okay just because I want that to be seen after the book is all stitched together right and then I'm gonna add another piece of fabric onto the spine also before I actually glue the book block into the cover but um, so anyways this is kinda what we want to do so what I'm what I did was um, I took the width of my spine okay and then I added about an inch and a quarter on each side um, of that okay so I created this piece of paper that is the height of my book minus about a quarter of an inch okay because I didn't want it to go all the way to the top or all the way to the bottom I want I want there to be a little bit of a you know I want it to be hidden so so like the height of this book is like what is it so it's it's basically seven and five eighths. So <clears throat> I made this seven and three eighths. Okay, so it's just a little bit shorter. It's like a quarter of an inch shorter. So then I took my two and a half inches, added a couple inches to make life simple. Um, try to cr try to keep it as far as like spacing out your signatures. It's better to keep it in like quarter inch increments rather than, you know, cutting it down to like eighth inch and stuff. It just gets really, you know, kind of hairy. So anyways, <clears throat> so I went with like a five inch width on this because you want at least an inch that you're going to be gluing onto the covers. Okay. On each side, you kind of want a substantial amount of paper um, that you're actually going to be gluing on. You want some substantial surface area. Okay. So I went five inches and then to figure out where I want my signatures, um, I need to figure out like where my spine is going to actually fall on this. Okay. I don't, I don't know what to call this, but, um, so let's just kind of, I'm just going to make a new one of those and just show you sort of how I do that. Um, get the old guillotine out. Um, so seven and three eighths is what our height is. Okay. So I'm going to go seven and three eighths and I'm just going to cut that. Okay. 
And then we know we need at least two and a half inches and I'm adding a couple of inches to make life simple. I'm just going to call it five inches. Okay. Um, so five inches. That's my, uh, that's my, my hidden spine basically. And then the other thing that we want is we want a template for uh, piercing the signature itself. So we want that to be the same height as the book also, and you'll see why we need that here in a second. This doesn't necessarily have to be measured a certain width or anything. I just, you know, I, I like it to be, you know, a couple of inches. So you'll see it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily matter the width of this. Um, but I mean, you don't want it super skinny either because you're going to be folding it in half and you don't want, you know, it's easier to fold a wider piece of paper. So basically done with that. So then um, I'll take this, this paper that's going to actually be my spine and my trusty pencil. And I know it's five inches, so that's twice the width of my spine, right? So if we're using up two and a half inches of this piece of paper with our spine, we need to cut that. We need to cut it in half, right? So, oh my gosh, this is way harder than I thought. <laughs> so <clears throat> we're going to subtract that two and a half inches that is the width of our spine. That leaves us two and a half inches, right? So we need to split that in half in order to find how wide we want the, the border. Okay, so it winds up being an inch and a quarter. So inch and a quarter plus an inch and a quarter plus two and a half is five inches. That's the total width. Okay, so I'm going to mark off an inch and a quarter. And I'm going to be drawing a line there. So I want to do that at the top and the bottom. So an inch and a quarter on this side. Inch and a quarter quarter on this side. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and just mark that off. And you're not going to see this. So, you know, you can, it doesn't matter if you write on this. Okay. So then we want to find the center. Since we're working with five signatures, we want the third signature to be right in the center, right? So right in the center of two and a half inches, is one and a quarter, right? So one and a quarter and one and a quarter. So then I'm gonna just go ahead and draw that one in. And then we do want a little tiny bit of a, um, we want a little bit of a gap between the cover and the first signature, right? Um, but that's not as important as the spacing of the actual signatures. So basically what, what I'm trying to say is I mark this off at, I need to get two more signatures in this space. Okay. So I want those to be evenly spaced and I want a little bit of a gap over here. So mathematically, this just works out really well, um, with a five inch piece of paper and, a two and a half inch spine. So what I did was I marked that at a, at a half an inch and then at one inch from the center. Okay. So then I'm going to do that again. I'm going to mark a half an inch and one inch. And what that does is it leaves me a quarter of an inch. That's going to be between my last signature and my first signature and the cover of the book. I hope this is making sense. So then we've got a half inch and one inch. And then we've got half inch and one inch, right? And then I'm just gonna go ahead and draw those in. So you don't, if you're doing multiple books like I do, you only really have to do this on one because you can use this as a template for punching or piercing the rest of your your hidden your spines okay so I'm just marking these off so this is going to be this is where my actual signatures are going to be lying uh, are going to be stitched in onto this book or onto this cover okay 
So then um, I'm gonna do a three hole pamphlet stitch on these. So I need to mark off where I want my holes to be, right? At, like what height I want them to be. So what I've done on this is I went one inch from the top, okay? So, I mean, you can put that anywhere you want on here. You just wanna mark it off though. So we want one inch from the top. And then since it's kind of an odd, uh, it's not like seven inches even or seven and a half inches even or whatever, it's like seven and three eighths, right? So I'm the top margin is not gonna be the same as the bottom. I'm gonna make the bottom a little bit, um, the holes at the bottom are gonna be up a little bit higher than the ones on the top are from the top. I hope that made sense. So then what I did was, I just went from that line, I marked three inches, because that's gonna put it right at about the center, okay? And then on this one, I'm just coming up, um, I'm actually just coming up one inch, I think. Yeah, I think that's what I did, one inch. No, just a second, that is not what I did. Hold on, because that doesn't put it in the center. Oh, I remember what I did. I went two and three quarters. That's what I did. Sorry, it's not three inches, it's two and three quarters. Okay, sorry guys. And then two and a half from, the, from that one, okay? So they're not exactly evenly spaced out, but it doesn't really matter because you're not gonna be really seeing the stitching anyways. Um, the only part of it you're gonna see is the very center of your signature, so. Okay, and then what you wanna do is you wanna mark those off and draw those in. And that's gonna give you, that's gonna give us like the intersect points for the piercing. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry, I, did, I actually started working on this yesterday, so I forgot what my measurements were. Okay, so that so then we have this, right? So before I pierce this, um, I basically want to, um, well, I want to put the fabric on here, but I also want to make my little template for piercing my signatures, okay? So, um, I can't remember how I did this. Okay, so basically what I did was I just drew that line again on this, on this uh, template. Okay, so I just kind of matched it up and I'm just drawing that line in. And then I don't know exactly what the center is of this, but it doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna be folding it in half on that line. I hope that makes sense. And you'll see why it doesn't necessarily matter um, in a second. So, so this I'm gonna fold in half. You could use your scoreboard and, um, you know, make it like absolutely perfect because this paper is a little bit difficult to fold anyways because it's so thick. But I am gonna smash it down with my bone folder. So you can see these are going to be where our where our holes are going to be for our signature, okay? Um, <clears throat> if you have a different way of doing this than, than I do, then, you know, feel free to do that your way. But um, this is what works for me. So, so this is what I'm going to be using in my signatures um, to, uh, to pierce them. I do want to make sure that I always know what is the top, okay? That's important. Um, just because our measurements are a little bit different um, as far as the distance between the center here and that line and the center and that line, okay? So you wanna make sure that you always have everything with the top up, okay? Um, okay, so then um, you can use you know, lots of different kinds of glue to attach your fabric. 
um, to that, I just happened to use that glue. Um, I love this glue. It's awesome for gluing fabric. It's permanent. Um, it's clean. It's easy to use. So that's what I'm using. Okay, so this fabric, I want it to extend even further than where I'm going to be gluing the, um, the, the spine to the cover, okay? So the, you don't necessarily have to measure this, but you do want to lay this out and sort of eyeball it and give yourself, you know, a little bit of a... Now, if you don't want to use fabric on your, you know, inside the, um, the, on the inside, then, you know, just use the paper. You know, you might want to use two layers of paper or something. I don't know. But I just like the look of the fabric. So that's why I use that. Um, and then, and then I also want a piece of this that I can use to cover to cover this part of the spine once I get it, once I get the signature stitched in. A lot of people use like um, cheesecloth or something um, so that they can kind of have it like sticking out the top and the bottom a little bit. Um, I just like to use another piece of fabric. So, and I know that that's gotta be two and a half inches. So I am gonna measure that and just tear that. And it can be a tiny bit narrower than that, and that's okay. So this is going to be like the the liner, okay? We'll call it the liner for the <clears throat> for the hidden spine, okay? So basically, what I want to do is turn this over, and then I'm going to glue this fabric on this side, okay? I'm gonna glue it on the on the other side. Because I still need to be able to see my lines and stuff, right? So I haven't punched any holes or anything yet because I wanna make sure that when I do that I'm actually piercing the fabric too and you should be able to see the um, the holes where you punch them or pierce them on the fabric because that's the part that you're going to be actually working with when you're stitching the signature sin. So, okay, so then I just lay this out and then I'm just going to eyeball the center. that um, kind of like stretch it just a little bit at the top I could have cut this or I could have torn this I should say just a little bit wider a little taller um, but it's okay it's gonna work see all right so then the only other thing that I like to do is um, I probably should have done this before I glued the fabric on. <laughs> Makes life easier, but I do like to score where the cover is going to be. I like to score that line. Yeah, I definitely should have done this before. Sorry, guys. So, <laughs> yeah, I got a little thick right there. Um... Okay. And I mean, if you don't, it's not the end of the world, right? It, it's not going to make a huge difference, but you can still fold it. So yeah, I should have scored this before I glued the fabric on, uh, which I did on the other ones. So, okay. So there's that, and that's going to fold like that. And that's going to fold like that. So this is going to be where we're stitching our our um, our signatures. Okay. 
so then this is just a couple pieces of uh, fun foam that I glued together with uh, three in one glue and so <clears throat> what I'm gonna do then is I'm just gonna come in pierce this at every one of these intersections okay because this is and see you can see those coming through the fabric And this is a pretty accurate way of, of doing that. Still want to be able to see where you wrote that, you know, where the top is. Okay. All right. So there's our spine. Here's our template. Um, so you want to grab your... your journal let's see where are we at okay so you can set that aside for now so what I like to do is work from the back to the front so what I do is I just take all my signatures and turn them face down okay and then <clears throat> so basically um, well next step would be what are we going to stitch it with? So I'm using this wax linen thread. Um, it's pretty sturdy and it's really nice to work with for book binding. Um, it's pretty thin, but like I said, it is pretty durable and it's also really easy to tie it in a knot like, and the knot will actually stay, um, better than certain like waxed cottons that you see like at Michael's and stuff. Some of those wax cottons, um, they don't stay tied in a, in a nice tight knot. Plus they're a little bit thicker. So this is a pretty thin wax linen. Um, anyway, so then I want to make sure that <laughs> my signature, that that's up. Okay. Top is at the top. So then I'm just going to take this and I'm just going to, my picture keeps going off on my computer. There we go. So I just want to line that up with the top and bottom of the signature, okay? And then I'm going to clip it in. And clip it in on that side. And if you have an envelope in the center of your signature, um, then this is when you want to definitely make sure that you um, open it up so you're stitching it in to actually stitching it into the signature. So then I'm going to kind of, if you have like a, um, a book cradle um, or an old phone book works great for doing this. I like to, you know, if you have something somewhere you can just set this down in the crook of a of uh, an old phone book or like a book cradle that's that's awesome I just kind of hold it up like this um, since I don't have well actually I guess I do have a phone book but I just do it like this sometimes I do things the hard way I guess okay so I poked all of my holes and <clears throat> so I want to take the template out important don't stitch your template into your journal <laughs> okay and set that aside for now if you have pieces that you're afraid they're going to shift around as you're working and stuff um like see this one it it's too short for the clip um you can just paper clip it to you know like the next page or something just to kind of hold it in place so then um the needle that I'm using is actually um, a darning needle. It's, I think it's better to use a needle that's somewhat dull um, because if you use a needle that's really super sharp when you're binding, um, it has a tendency to poke holes in the paper where you don't want holes. So it's better to use a somewhat dull or rounded needle. Okay, but you still want one that's pretty thin so that you're not actually like enlarging your holes a lot as you're, you know, as you're stitching. So, um, <clears throat> all right. So this is how I do a three hole pamphlet stitch. And I know there's, you know, some people do it different, but I start in the center and then 
as I'm I'm basically holding the holding the signature on my hand with the needle through that center hole I'm gonna feed the cover onto it with the fabric up okay and then just pull it through so that I still have like a tail that's long enough to to work with as far as tying a knot and then I'm gonna go back in through the top hole and then through the top hole in my signature pull it so that it's you know there's not a lot of slack it doesn't have to be tight um, now some people will come all the way down to the bottom and and stitch and then come back up and stitch through the center um, I feel like it's easier to kind of to, to do it like this but so I go back through the center and then through the spine and then through the bottom signature or the bottom hole okay the bottom one for some reason always gives me a hard time okay so then once you have that done then you can take the clips off the clips irritate me for some reason but they really do help in this type of binding so um, so you want to make sure that you don't have like a bunch of slack in any of your you know any of your thread okay um, and then go ahead and cut that off um, <clears throat> some people like to try to make sure that their knot is in the very center of the signature for this I it I don't really care where the knot is um, it it doesn't matter to me so if I have an envelope in the center of the signature I definitely want the knot to to wind up inside the envelope though okay so and then some people like to leave these long and they add charms on them and that kind of thing I'm not doing that on this book um, so yeah so there's the first signature um, stitched in to the spine okay so then you just continue on with that um, you know punching each one individually um, you know clipping it so I'll do one more and just kind of show you how I deal with the envelope it's it's really pretty simple so you want an envelope where well if you have an envelope where like so these I actually avocado dyed so all the glue kind of dissolved away and so this is how I like to use these so I try to make sure that it's like upright like it makes sense like I I mean you could put it in that way too it doesn't really matter but depending on what side of the envelope you want to show first in your book um, and then you want to open the flap and then put your template in okay and then when you're clipping this together you definitely want to be able to hold that envelope in place okay so right now we're worried about holding the envelope in place and the template okay um, so when you get this up here like that you just want to make sure that this that the template is nice and and you know flush with the with that uh, angle at the bottom okay and then using those same holes trying not to enlarge those holes dramatically because over time as those holes get bigger um, it can start to affect your placement of, of your holes in your in your signatures so then we want to take the we want to take the um, template out I still want the envelope clipped so there we go and then I'm just gonna add a little like a paper clip right there just to make sure that the envelope doesn't shift around too much okay and then make sure I still have enough thread on here and there's formulas for measuring uh, how much thread you need 
for how many signatures on what length the book and that kind of thing, but I just eyeball it. I'm trying to stay in frame here for you guys. be kind of patient. I think this is actually pretty relaxing. Um, and it's a pretty simple stitch, really. And it's pretty sturdy. It's actually very sturdy. Um, I liked I like to use that that three hole pamphlet stitch, or you could even do a five hole. Um, because in kind of the way I think about it, it's like since we're not stitching through the spine, um, we want more points of connection to be supporting the weight of the signature on the hidden spine. So rather than just two points, because over time, like, as that book is being used and pages are flipped and stuff, two holes are going to weaken a lot faster than three. Um, that's just kind of the way I think about it. Uh, like I said, five hole would probably even be better, but eh, I'm doing three. <laughs> so, so when I'm tying this knot, I just want to make sure that that knot falls somewhere inside the envelope. It's actually a little bit low, but so there we go. And then I can come back and glue the envelope shut or you, you don't have to. I mean, you can leave it open if you want, but um, I will probably glue it shut. So, okay. So there's. Did I do that upside down? Yes, I did. See? <laughs> Keep your top from your bottom, Jessica. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, that happens all the time. Just saying. Yes, I stitched it in upside down. So, I'm going to actually just fix it. And I'm going to take it out. And I'm sure lots of you guys were probably going, Jessica... It's upside down. It's upside down. No, it's upside down. <laughs> anyway. So, yeah. I stitched it in upside down. But that's okay. It's a learning experience, right? So, that's my back signature. Anyway, let me do this again. Hold on. Hold the phone. I'm such a dingling. And if I knew how to edit videos, then I would most likely cut that out. But <laughs> it won't take long. I think it was upside down. I don't know. Maybe it wasn't. When I took it apart, it sort of looked like maybe it wasn't upside down. But anyways, um... Let me put these clips back on here. Hopefully everything is still going to line up okay for me. Alright. I'll get it back in here quick, guys. <laughs> Sorry. Um... The only other thing that is kind of weird about doing this type of spine is gluing it into the book. So I definitely, you know, I want to kind of show you guys how I do that. Um, there's, like I said, there's lots of ways to do that. There's lots of ways to do all of this stuff, right? But, um, you know, I have my own little kind of method and, <clears throat> and it works for me. 
So I just want to kind of show you guys how that how that goes. One thing that I've noticed like when I'm stitching something that has a lot of signatures, like more than three, it helps to have something like this to sort of elevate the book when you're tying your um when you're tying off. Um I didn't really like where the knot was anyways in this one, so um I don't know, maybe it was an upside down. Gosh, I'm just a dingling. I don't know. It looked like it was upside down. <laughs> anyway, um, it's nice to have something like this to kind of elevate the center of the book. It just, it makes it easier to tie your knots. So I think that leaf kind of threw me off. I don't know. Who knows? And the tabs were kind of looking weird to me. But anyways, okay, so that's stitching the signatures in. And then, so you just keep doing that. Um... Yeah, until you get them all stitched in. Okay, so I'm just going to set this one aside. I have another one. I was a little bit prepared. <clears throat> um, where's the one that I was going to glue? Let me see. Is this it? Yeah. Okay. So... I want to add that little kind of, you know, strip of fabric on the spine here that's actually going to kind of stick out the top of the book after I put it together, okay? So I'm going to use uh, three and one to do that just because it dries really quick and, um, yeah, and it's not going to, it's not going to warp anything or, oh, hold on a second, it's kind of yucky. So I folded the, um, where I have the kind of the, um, score, you know, where the, um, edge of the cover is going to be. I just, you know, I want to make sure that that's kind of creased a little bit. So, um, and then I'm going to glue this on. It doesn't have to be like super perfect, right? Um, I just kind of want to cover up the paper too. So I'm not using a ton of glue though. Mostly the most important part is the top and bottom. Okay. So then I'm just going to lay that on there. sort of flatten it down with the flat part of my hand. And it does dry pretty fast, so. So some people use like score tape and stuff <clears throat> to get, you know, to kind of help adhere the spine to the cover. I just feel like the three in one or fabric tack works just just fine um, you know since it dries so quickly and I mean you can just kind of clamp the book together a little bit too and that helps so basically you just take that book block and um, sort of push it into the spine like you want it you want your signatures to be up against the spine okay um, and then basically what I do is I sort of hold it down like this take all the signatures I'm still sort of pressing down and then um, I'm just gonna add glue onto the edge of this right there. I'm going to come out about a half an inch or so. I can come back and add a little bit more later if I need to. Okay. And then I'm just going to close the book up again. Okay. I'm just going to wait a couple seconds, sort of add a little bit of pressure. 
And my picture keeps turning off. My monitor keeps turning off. <clears throat> so I can lay it down and sort of work my hand in there and just kind of make sure that it's all pressed down. So then um, I like to actually take a clip and just kind of just to make sure that it doesn't shift. I just add a clip on top and bottom. Okay. And then basically I just do the same thing on the other side. Still holding this down just to make sure that it's down in the curvature of the spine. Um, and that I'm going to turn this over though. You don't want to get glue in the spine though. Like that's the whole point of this. Like you don't want to get glue down underneath there. But you do want to use, like, I mean, a fair amount of glue because um, there's a lot of pressure and, you know, it's it's got to be sturdy. Um, and you want that glue to really have a chance to hold up, right? So then I'm, pre I'm pressing the books. I'm putting pressure down that way. And then I'm going to close the book again. Just gonna hold it for a minute, give it a chance to grab. My glue is vomiting. I want to finish these journals, you guys. I've been working on these forever. Um, okay. I <laughs> hope I'm recording. All right, and then I'm gonna open it up just a little bit. Kind of give it a little rub down and then I'm going to clip it. One of my clips like completely exploded earlier. So I'm missing, oh here it is. All right, so then I'm just going to leave this uh, to dry for a little while, like a little while being, you know, I don't know, half hour or so, and um, it should be, it should be pretty good. Um, so then, so here's basically what I, you know, what the benefit to, to binding like this is. <clears throat> so here's another one that I did earlier and so you can see that basically <clears throat> when the book is closed the signatures push back into the curve okay and when the book opens that kind of lifts up right and they come away from the curve so what that does is it sort of gives them it, it gives them the freedom to lay flat okay so it makes it just a little bit more friendly for writing in um, especially on a book that's kind of thick right um, I mean that's that's the that's the whole that's the whole thing about a curved spine you know so see you wind up with a gap in between your signatures if you absolutely hate that you could add something there, like some kind of trim or something like that, or um, or you could do more signatures and then you know just space them out with a with a um, thinner gap in between. So yeah, so you see, there's just that little tiny gap in between the last signature and the cover of the book, right? So you know this fabric isn't isn't glued down. Um, you know, I don't know if I'm going to glue it down or what I'm going to do with it, but 
I think I'm probably going to wind up adding a pocket on here. Something like that, you know, like, I don't know, something. And then, um, yeah, something on the front too. So, like I said, they're not finished. But, um, yeah, so that's, yeah, so that's kind of, that's how I put these together. And, um, it's not too, it's not too hard. It's really not. And I think it looks really nice. So, um, so try that, try that guys. And, uh, let me know what you think. Sorry, I was kind of a dingling about, about the signature being upside down. Um, I thought for sure it was, but I don't think it was now. Anywho, so I'm going to finish putting these together and, um, yeah. And, um, uh, I should, ha I don't know. I don't want to commit, but it should be done here in the next couple days. Um, anyway, so give me a thumbs up, you guys. Uh, I'm not like a super professional at tutorials, so be kind. But, um, I hope that helps. So, anyway, guys. I love you, and um, I will see you on my live stream on Sunday, okay? Be there, be square. Okay, stay out of trouble. Bye, guys.